Welcome to the Awaken, Heal, and Thrive podcast. I'm Benjamin Bernstein, your host, and today's episode is encouragement for beleaguered light workers. So, what is a light worker? A light worker is someone who is consciously doing something to try to help uplift humanity in some way. And this can be anything from you're just kind of holding your own awakening the best you can and doing that alone is a significant service even if you don't do anything outwardly because if you are holding divine consciousness to any degree it naturally radiates out to the world in a very subtle way uplifts everything else so that's a beautiful service some of us like me are called to be a little more overt about it and we go and do things out in the world that are visible and more obviously affect things like this podcast is one such endeavor that's kind of what i mean by light worker someone who's working to you know grow their own light or uplift the energy of the world And why would we be beleaguered? Well, do I need to even tell you? As I record this, you know, Russia is threatening nuclear armaments and we've lost Roe versus Wade in the United States. And there's all sorts of um, conservative reactionary forces getting stronger and stronger, it seems. So I'm here to tell you, I believe it's all part of the plan. I think we don't get the breakthrough without a certain level of intensity and challenge. That's, I mean, think of your own life. When have you really hit a major breakthrough when you didn't have some kind of crisis come up and most of us tend to cruise in our comfort zone and as long as it's comfortable enough, we're fine. We're not super motivated. But when things get hard, when they get challenging, when they get difficult, when you just can't stand the way it is anymore, then you change. So the world at large is no different. Conscious forces at play in the world are saying, you know, we are We have a chance here to shift into the Aquarian age in a beautiful way. We have a chance for a world that is more harmonious and loving and compassionate where humans care for each other and the environment and all other beings. And a lot of us are that way already, but a lot are not. So the only way we get enough of a paradigm shift is to make things challenging enough to raise the stakes enough that we kind of have to, I mean, we have the global environment situation. I mean, if we pursue our current course, then, A lot of beings are going to die, including a lot of humans, if the environmental degradation and heating keeps happening like it is. So the stakes are high on a global level. In one way, you can say, wow, I feel beleaguered as a light worker. I feel like it's just too much. I feel like I want to just lay down and give up or lose myself in distraction. I'm going to watch Netflix or take substances or just kind of check out. And that, of course, is exactly what the dark side would love you to do. That's uh, we took another one out of the picture. Yay. So um, first, let me give you one of my philosophies, which is what is mine to do? Uh, Years ago, there was a John Travolta movie. He played the Archangel Michael. The movie was called Michael. And my favorite line of that whole movie, it wasn't that great a movie, I didn't think, but there was one line I loved. Uh, He was with this woman and he plays Archangel Michael in human form, kind of overweight, kind of slovenly. And um, she sees some terrible injustice happen. He says, well, you're the Archangel. Why don't you do something about it? And he says, not my department. (laughs) So I'm not saying to be uncaring. But as an archangel, he has a particular range of responsibilities. And if it ain't his department, he's not going to do it. In the same way, what do I do as a light worker? I have a particular niche I've been drawn to. My intuition is moving me in certain directions. I'm here to write a book and put out a podcast and, you know, do things I can to spread love and light as I can to those who are ready for what I do. But the rest I can't worry about. I'm not here to go out on the street and protest a particular thing. I'm 62 years old. I'm not quite as vigorous and, you know, proactive physically anymore, but I can do things in other ways. So for each of us, if we're awake enough, we're getting intuition. In fact, even if you're not, I've rarely worked with a client. I've worked with over 10,000 clients, astrology, shamanic healing, life coaching, whatever it is I do for a person. And when I ask them about intuition, is there any time you just kind of know in your bones something, you get a call to action and you kind of check, oh, that felt kind of strong and maybe I really should do that. You know, just about everyone has felt that. I'm guessing you have too. That's your higher self trying to guide you. So the thing is, which things are you being guided to do? If you're spending all your time worrying about all the horrible things in the world and just feeling like overwhelmed and you want to just lay down and do nothing, then you're not doing your part. You're thinking, I have to somehow be responsible for all of it and it's just too much and I give up. Whereas if you just say, okay, what is mine to do? And you just relax and say, okay, spirit does guide me. What is my small role? You know, according to the best information I have, there are nearly a billion 
light workers on the planet right now, a significant percentage of the Earth's population is actively working to spread love and light and spread higher consciousness on the planet. It isn't your job alone. You've got a lot of help. So the key thing to think is, okay, as I think, what can I possibly do to help this huge mess? First, you're part of a huge team, so it's not all on you. Ask yourself, what do I feel intuitively drawn to do? And what do I love to do? What do my gifts and talents support me doing? You know, for me, I'm, I'm pretty good with words. I can present. I, can, I have certain gifts and talents that I'm using for this podcast and the book I wrote and all the other stuff I do. So I'm very clear on my particular role. If I work with individual clients, there's things I can do for them. So I have found my niche. I'm very comfortable in it. And I know for sure I'm serving and my allies tell me I'm serving in the way I'm here to do. So I know what it's like after many years of searching for my niche. I'm finally in it and serving and feeling great. And I want you to be the same way. So I encourage you. It is possible. I've done it. You can find your niche. So if you're fuzzy and you don't even know what your talents are, or what your service path is, here's my uh, prescription to get there. Um, prioritize your own awakening and healing. And I'm not going to go deep into this because I'll be doing other episodes that dive into these themes a little more strongly. But um, your own awakening, in my opinion, is the very most important number one priority if you are a light worker. I don't care how awake you are, chances are you can go deeper. I had a huge awakening back in 2012 when it finally locked in and it didn't, didn't go away. And it was so incredible. I thought, oh my God, how could it possibly get better? And then it got better. And again, and again, and again, just upticking over and over. It's like a dimmer switch. It's like, you know, I don't care how awake you are. There's more awakenings available. They're even more amazing that you couldn't even conceive right now. You're not ready to even be able to contemplate it yet, but you'll know it when you get there. So know that it's possible to always go deeper, no matter how awake you are. So knowing that, um, you know that, okay, I can awaken more. The more I awaken, the more intuitive guidance I get. And my intuitive guidance will direct me to the particular service things I'm here to do. But maintaining and deepening your own awakening ensures that you'll know what to do and give you the greatest capacity. Because the more awake you are, the more clear you are as a conduit for information and energy, the more effective your service is going to be. A deeply awakened person can be a hundred times more effective than one who's not awake or only partially awake. So maximize the awakening. And that goes with healing. In my experience, healing is what opens the awakening. If you're doing good shadow work, if you're feeling something come up that feels uncomfortable, that's heavy energy that's blocking your light. I don't want to get into the whole great onion of consciousness right now. That'll be for a later episode too. But basically, if you've got heavy stuff stirring up inside you, it's blocking some of your divine awareness and some of your access to divine energy and information. So doing good shadow work processes, having a good tool, my healing invocation is one thing that does the job well. Just find a way to face and flush that stuff so it doesn't keep bothering you because you can flush stuff once and for all and literally have it never bother you again. So prioritizing your own healing, your own awakening, which really are the same thing. If you do a strong healing process, you will awaken automatically as part of it. You can't not. It's just kind of wired in together. So healing and awakening for yourself, it might seem selfish, but it is the absolute foundation for your greatest service. Then when you wake up enough, You'll start getting that download inside you telling you what to do, and then you'll know what to do. And then you'll know what is mine to do. So I kind of <laughs> took a tangent and came back, but that's the idea. If you're a beleaguered light worker, A, understand the chaos in the world is by design. Until things get to a certain level of intensity, we won't be motivated to act. Once you're awake enough and you are clear enough to get your instructions, you can be internally guided and know what's yours to do in the moment. So that's the theme I wanted to hit today. I hope that's helpful. If you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to comment. If you're on a place where you can comment or email me, benjamin at astroshaman.com. And uh, of course, I would love it if you haven't already to subscribe to this podcast or this video, however you're watching it, and would love to uh, get your feedback and engagement. So that's it. Again, I'm Benjamin Bernstein, and this is the Awaken, Heal, and Thrive podcast. Thank you for watching or listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, you might also like my free online mini course. It's called Instant Divine Assistance, your free guide to fast and easy awakening and healing. It'll teach you how to invoke your own embodied awakening and healing and put it all into a simple daily practice. You can also check out my best-selling book that develops these ideas further. It's also called Instant Divine Assistance. In its first week, it hit number one on Amazon in 11 categories and has tons of five-star reviews. 
Finally, I have an online membership called Awakening Plus, where you can significantly speed up your spiritual evolution. Its slogan is also the name of this podcast, Awaken, Heal, and Thrive. You'll find links to all this wonderful stuff in the show notes.